and welcome to The Watchman. Well, we document for you on this show each week how radical Islam is on the march around the world. ISIS is on the rise. Iran is driving towards a nuclear weapon. Lone wolf Islamic terrorism is becoming more and more prevalent right here in the West. So where is all of this heading? What do the next few years hold for the struggle between the West and the jihadists? A blockbuster new novel gives us a fascinating and riveting look at what may be coming to your backyard very soon. It's called The Coalition, and its co-authors know a thing or two about the Middle East and the world of radical Islam. In fact, I can't think of a better pair of experts with hands-on experience to write this book. They're good friends of mine, end of CBN News, and they're joining us here today. General Jerry Boykin is Executive Vice President of the Family Research Council and a founding member of the U.S. Army's Delta Force. He's commanded the Green Berets and served as Deputy, Deputy Undersecretary of Defense at the Pentagon. His co-author for the new book, The Coalition, is Kamal Saleem. Kamal is a native of Lebanon and a former radical Islamist who is now a follower of Jesus. You've seen his amazing story, the amazing story of his conversion here on CBN News. He's now the director of Coombe Ministries, along with his wife, Victoria. They're doing great work. You're going to hear more about that a bit later in the show. But gentlemen, first, welcome and congratulations on the coalition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. It's good to be with you. Guys, let me tell you, I mean, we're, we're seeing everything unfolding in the Middle East right now with ISIS in our backyard with this homegrown jihad. And this book is literally ripped from the headlines. First of all, General, I'll start with you. Uh, tell us, the title of the book is The Coalition. What is The Coalition? Well, The Coalition uh, is, is really set about five years from now. And uh, what it represents is the fact that uh, uh, radical Islam is taking over large sectors of the world, uh, as it is in fact doing, and governments are not dealing with it, so the private sector decides that they will stand up against radical Islam because governments will not. And the coalition is a coalition of, uh, of uh, people in the private sector that want to stop the spread of radical Islam and the establishment of the global caliphate. Yeah, General, that's amazing because it seems like we're reaching that tipping point now. The, the Obama administration, many European governments, many would say have been kind of weak in the face of this sure. rise of radical Islam. So basically these are private citizens raising, I, I believe in the book their name is the Sodality. That's right. And it's private citizens, is it ex-generals like yourself? Who, who kind of forms this, this counter-jihad resistance group? Well, it's uh, business people that can help to finance this. It is former military people. Uh, it is your everyday citizens that have uh, recognized that uh, the future of their children and grandchildren depends upon them doing something to stop radical Islam. Yeah. Now, Kamal, we're seeing obviously the rise of ISIS right now, forming a modern-day caliphate in the heart of the Middle East, inspiring homegrown jihadis in the U.S. and in Europe. How much did the rise of ISIS over the past year or so, did that influence this book at all? Well, absolutely. You know, we, we started writing the book uh, even before ISIS, and uh, the book was written from two perspectives. General Jerry Boykin, you know, and what he did in his life and what I did in my life. And we brought those in to bring the secret of secrets, to put it out there in the open. And, but uh, we were expecting and, you know, waiting for ISIS to take place. We saw the Arab Spring rising and we know uh, the Arab winter must come. So ISIS was the second one. And that is uh, Babylon verbatim, you know, today, a revival of Babylon, yeah. exactly what has taken place in that, uh, in that place. So while well, we establish all this in this book, this book set the whole situation for this to let us know what's coming and what's going to be taking place and what should we do as a nation. Yeah, this book is it's prophetic in general, as you said, set five years in the future. And just so everyone knows, Kamal's background, look, Kamal, you're... You have extensive experience in the Middle East with radical jihadist groups. Real quick, tell us about how your personal experiences, and I believe one of the characters in the book, Omar, one of the main yes. characters, may be based on Kamal Salim. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, we, we truly, we did it based on General Jerry's life and my life, you know, and from experience. Although the book is a fiction, but nevertheless, the experience is real. 
So, uh, you know, I grew up in that uh, side of the world. I was radicalized by my family, you know, and we were commended to do this. And from there, you know, I was recruited by the Muslim Brotherhood at the age of uh, seven. And then I, was, I went uh, from there to a PLO. The whole group joined Fatah at that time before the PLO. And, uh, and we realized that Islam got our eyes to fulfill the prophecies that given to us by Muhammad. So and that prophecy of Muhammad says, Inni umertu un qatil shu'ub. I have been commanded by Allah to fight the people of the world until everyone says there's no God but Allah and Muhammad his prophet. And if they don't concede to you, then you have a right to everything they have, their women, their children, their home, their monies, their land, their everything. This is what ISIS is doing exactly. Subjugating the women, taking the home, destroying the Christian, killing the men and the boys, you know, so they are changing the world. Yeah. So this is what we, uh, we were brought for, for, for such time as this. And, uh, but the amazing grace that, you know, somehow God said, you step aside, you're coming with me. You're not going with them. And that's what the story, you know, yeah. uh, in, in the whole story in a small understanding. And folks, you're hearing it. I mean, the on the ground experience of Kamal, of course, of General Jerry Boykin, a general, the protagonist of the book, Blake Kershaw, uh, tell us about how your life experiences inspired this character. Well, he is a uh, he's a young man from the South, which I, mm -hmm. I grew up in North Carolina. He's a young man that came out of uh, the rural South and uh, he came in the Army and served mm -hmm. in special operations. Of course, my career, most of my 36-year career was in special operations. Now, you always create a character that's everything you always wanted to be, but never were. So it's not an exact parallel to my life because he's far more courageous than I am. He's probably brighter than I am. But that said, the point here is, Kamal and I were on opposite sides. 20 years ago, if I had had the opportunity, I would have killed him and had no second thoughts about it. He would have killed me. Now think about the concept of the two of us who were in organizations that were going after each other, had we met at the appropriate time and the appropriate place, it would have been a bloodbath. We would have killed each other. And I look you in the eye and tell you, I would have killed him and he would have killed me. Absolutely. But today we're writing books together, we're speaking together, we're doing media appearances together. What changed the game? And what changed the game was a common faith a faith in and a love for Jesus Christ that brought us together as brothers and we are in fact very close friends in addition to just being brothers in Christ. Yeah. And that faith and that relationship, that friendship I think shines through in the book. Gentlemen, one of the things I found was, was eerily prophetic about the book and very fascinating was that the West kind of in this near future scenario in the book the West starts to become overrun a bit by, by Islam, these Sharia enclaves that we already see in Europe and places like East London. Tell us more about that. Tell us the state of the West. In your book, The Coalition, tell us the state of the West, I guess circa 2020 or so, mm -hmm. uh, the book or thereabouts is set. Uh, what's the state of the West as you peer into your crystal ball in this book? Well, what are we seeing today? The, the, these Islamists uh, are well-funded, uh, you know, there are so much money, you know, in their pocketbook, uh, petrodollars. And then uh, they understand how to infiltrate our civilization. They go on after our very uh, sphere of influences, you know, the mountains of influence, you know, like from family to education to military to whatever, and they are affecting everything from within. It's a Muslim it's Brotherhood blueprint, right? like, like termites. The Muslim Brotherhood right. burrow in that's right. to a host it's their society, eat away. It was found in the Holy yeah. Land Foundation trial. But, right. but nevertheless, uh, we are seeing the West is uh, weakening because uh, they, are, they don't have the fight in them anymore. Yeah. And uh, we have not seen anybody taking a stand. And uh, now, by allowing Sharia law to become part of a different civilization, we've seen that the Islamists, beca they have zones that says no-go zone. Yeah. I've these been in are, them. These are Islamists, right. you know, Anjami Chaudhary yeah. told me, he said, we're coming to America. Our flag will be flying on the White House, then it'll be American state if it's not now several years from now, but we're coming to the United States of America. Yeah. And so therefore, America, we have an issue right now with education. Our media is our worst enemy. Uh, the media is, you know, not telling us what's happening overseas. 
when we have hundreds of thousands of people have been murdered so far yeah. and nobody's talking about them. And our government uh, absolutely playing the other game and they're taking the sequestering money and the advancing Islamization in Europe. They're helping yeah. the, in, the, the, in, you know, yeah. the explosion of Islam. So we're coming to a place we are oppressed by yeah. every level, whether it's education, government, or uh, militarily or anything. And now when you look at yourself and you find your name that you're an enemy of the United States number one because you're a Christian, it says it all. Yeah. Uh, what kind of government do we have? It really does. And gen yeah. Generally, we have about 20 seconds left before the break, but you've been a leader of men. Weak leadership, how big of a problem is it in this fight? How much is it hurting us right now? Greatest weakness is the failure of our leadership to recognize the enemy, and that's radical Islam. First Biggest rule. failure. First rule of war, know your enemy, right? Know Sun your Zoo, enemy. As you know very well, General. Well, look, this book, The Coalition, it's a novel, but it's ripped from today's headlines. We're coming back with much more about The Coalition, the global jihad with Kamal Saleem, General Jerry Boykin. Don't move. And welcome back. We are talking to the authors of the blockbuster new novel, The Coalition, Kamal Saleem, the one and only General Jerry Boykin. General Boykin, during the break we were having an interesting conversation and I said, well, look, I want to get into the rise of this lone wolf Islamic terrorism. You said, man, I can't stand that term, lone wolf. Why not? Why is that a bad term? These people are terrorists and we need to call them terrorists, period. Uh, lone wolf would lead you to believe that they're uh, just a criminal, that they're just a, a loony, that they're not motivated by anything in particular. The reality is whether they are sleeping next to a, uh, another member of Al-Qaeda or ISIS every night or whether they're sleeping in their own bedroom in downtown Washington, D.C., they are still motivated by Islamic extremism, the same theology as every member of Al-Qaeda, Al-Shabaab, ISIS, the Nusra Front, pick, pick a, you know, your group. They're motivated by Islamic extremism. Kamal, you know Islamic extremism very well. You lived it, you believed it for a long time. We don't understand the nature of our enemy. General Boykin discussed it a bit before the break. Our leadership, especially the media, the ac academia, our elites don't seem to get this threat. Tell us at the end of the day what the Islamic jihadists want, because everyone at home really needs to understand this. This is very important because a lot of times people say, oh, well, what's going on in the Middle East doesn't affect me. I'm here in America. I'm comfortable. Why should Americans care about the rise of, of Islamic extremism? Well, this is a spiritual warfare, number one. Number two is uh, these Muslim, uh, you know, they don't have the life that we live. You know, they have to walk out their prophecies. And you could not please Allah, according to Islam, unless you offer yourself in sacrifice of jihad, whether financial jihad or, you know, political jihad or whatever. And a lot of these men, uh, you know, heaven is not guaranteed in Islam. It says, wa kullu minkum wa All the Muslim will have to go to hell first, you know, and then the only guarantee is when you serve in jihad. Jihad is a six pillar in Islam, that silent pillar that yeah, nobody talks about. Unspoken. Yes, and, yeah. and everybody is commanded by Allah and by Muhammad to go into jihad. So now the jihadi are trying to bring the final prophecies to bring one world order, you know, Islamism. Because you know. they have prophecies too, by the way. Yes, they do. We talk yeah. about biblical prophecy. There are Quranic prophecies as well. That's right. And what we need to understand, the terminology that the Muslims speak, it doesn't mean the same terminology that we speak in American. Like when we speak Islamic peace versus a Christian peace, or when we speak about, you know, because peace here is about dictatorship of Islam and fascism, while here is freedom for the whole people. So therefore, in the Quran, you know, in the Hadith by the tradition of Muhammad, he said, the last days will not come about until the Muslim arise. And a rise in Islam is not like, you know, somebody taking, taking stand out of their chair, but a rise is in a holy war, jihad. Even the tree and, and the rock will cry out, you know, behind an infidel, come and behead him. Yes. So therefore what happened is uh, they are looking for the inheritance and they are looking to bring about one war in the Islamic order. Islam is only 14% religion. The rest of the Islam, it's a political system, it's military true. system, civic system. So when you're inviting this, you're inviting 
a whole war, you know, we world are. of understanding. We gotta leave it right there, Kamal. Much more coming up after the break. The Coalition is the book. Kamal Saleem, General Jerry Boykin, much more to come. Stay tuned. And welcome back. We are talking to the co-authors of the hot off the press's new book, The Coalition. It's a novel, but folks, let me tell you, it is ripped from today's headlines and eerily prophetic and eye-opener. It's fascinating. It's riveting. We are joined by the co-authors, Kamal Saleem, General Jerry Boykin, two warriors for the cause and my good friends. General, we had another interesting conversation during the break, and we could do, I think, 10 shows, the three of us. Um, but you made a great point. You said, look, we need to get across to people that not all Muslims are jihadists. Uh, a lot of times people say, look, why don't moderate Muslims speak out? Why don't we see a million Muslim march on the National Mall? Why do you think we see such silence overall from the Muslim community? The Muslims who reject Sharia and don't want to be part of jihad have no voice in America. Uh, our administrations, both Republican and Democrat, I might add, have catered to the extremist elements of Islam. They've catered to Muslim Brotherhood organizations like Council of American Islamic Relations and Islamic Society in North America. These are Muslim Brotherhood fronts. It's been proven in federal court. We cater to them and we don't encourage the Muslims that reject Sharia. We don't encourage them. We don't say we'll stand with you. We'll support you. If you'll rise up and, and declare this is not according to the Quran. Now, uh, they are intimidated and they have yet to find a, uh, a strong voice in America because of that intimidation. That's true. And the tip of the spear for that in intimidation, Kamal, is a group that you focus on a lot, the Muslim Brotherhood. Correct. And their affiliates and their front groups here in the United States. In the book, The Coalition, you get into the organization of the Islamic Conference or Islamic Cooperation, the OIC huge body at the UN, basically all, all Muslim nations united speaking with one voice. Tell us about the role they play in the book, number one, and number two, uh, the role they play in the real world today and a destructive role. Number one, they are here coming together and they want to control everything else. They see in the EU coming to the forefront, the United States been a uh, super you know, power. Now they want to come to the for uh, forefront. They want to control the oil. They want to control all the assets and generate, bring uh, a new brand of people to fight by controlling the UN, by controlling different government from behind. And they try taking the Western strategy and implementing, you know, their focus into the Western uh, civilization that they can reroute them from within. And uh, this is what they're doing. But here at the forefront, what we're seeing, we're seeing the Muslim Brotherhood intimidating all other Muslims. You know, if you're not going to do this, we're going to get you deported. Uh, if you're not going to come with us and rally with us, we're going to get your family over in the Middle yeah. East. We have a lot of those intimidation because Ruthless. in the Middle East, everybody knows each other. And there are families being killed because of this, if you take stand on the wrong side in the United States. But what we need to know is, how do we know the radical from non-radical? You know, is, and, and that is, when we ask them this, uh, do you believe Sharia should be part of the American Constitution, which is Sharia is the Islamic Constitution? Yeah. If they said yes then they are radical. If they said no, then we know that they are moderate. Yeah, that's a great point. General, look, you've been in the battlefield. You have faced down jihadist eyeball to eyeball uh, for many years, bravely serving our country and leading soldiers. How do we defeat this enemy? A broad question. Let me, let me boil it down, drill down a little bit. Okay, we're going against ISIS right now in the Middle East. We're, we're bombing them from the air. Uh, at the end of the day, let's just keep it focused on ISIS. How can we defeat ISIS? Uh, it's, I guess it's militarily an ideological war. What's your take? First of all, we have to recognize what motivates ISIS. We have to recognize why they do what they do. And when the president lays out a strategy that starts with ISIS is not Islam, the rest of what he says doesn't matter because he's missed it. So we first of all have to recognize why they do what they do, who they are. You got to understand your enemy. Know your enemy is a fundamental. You said it earlier. But secondly, we need to kill them. We, we need to just destroy that. We need to kill them. I say that as an ordained Christian. Now, if they are willing to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, we ought to make every effort to present it to them. But they have no interest in that. 
They're going to kill us and other Christians if we don't kill them, and we're going to kill them there or we're going to kill them here. General, great point, folks. That is wisdom from General Jerry Boykin. Final thoughts with, with General Boykin, Kamal Saleem, after the break. Stick around. And welcome back. We are wrapping up with Kamal Saleem, General Jerry Boykin, authors of the blockbuster new novel, The Coalition. Folks, you can find it Amazon.com. Uh, there is a Kindle of the book. Barnes & Noble, wherever books are sold, pick this up, The Coalition. You will not regret it. Kamal, we have a short time left. What do you hope to accomplish with this book, The Coalition? To really educate and enlighten people and wake up America, specifically the pastors out there. Uh, we have a deficit of pastors that they are afraid to talk about the truth. And that's why the church became lame duck, you know, and uh, because we have nobody championing the church. But today is we need to wake up and join together and see how we can lift each other arm, arms up because the great, the, the small minority are taking over the majority. Yeah. Small Islamist group controlling the Christian, uh, you know, uh, America. Arise Church. Uh, General, 30 seconds, some final thoughts. Take this threat of radical Islam seriously and recognize that it is in America. It has been in America for a long time and it continues to come across our southern borders. We have to take it seriously and stand up against it. Well, General, we know you're standing up against it. Kamal as well. It's been an honor to have you on the show. You see their websites on the screen, folks. Check them out online. I believe you can get a signed copy of the book on General Boykin's website. The book is The Coalition. It is a must read. Again, Amazon.com, wherever books are sold, pick it up. And until next week, thanks for joining us here on The Watchman. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.